today, we're gonna take a look at one of the rarest Apple accelerators ever made, the fabled Zip GS. It has the power to completely transform the sluggish experience on the Apple II GS, which was famously crippled by someone. We're gonna install this thing in our tricked out stealth Apple II GS build, and hopefully, finally, have enough power to play the 2GS port of Wolfenstein 3D. We're pulling chips and flipping dips, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy righting the wrongs of history, at least as far as 30 year old underpowered processor wrongs, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We trick out all sorts of vintage computers around here, so it's definitely worth sticking around. The Zip GS was one of a handful of accelerators released for the Apple II GS. You see, although the Apple II had been Apple's bread and butter since the late 70s, they were increasingly focused on next-gen Macintosh in the mid 80s. 1986's Apple II GS was intended to be the next generation of the Apple II line. The machine had a graphical user interface that in many ways was superior to that of the Mac, at least at the time, adding color and fantastic sound capabilities to an intuitive and Mac-like interface. However, the anecdotal and likely apocryphal story goes that Steve Wozniak wanted the 2GS to work at 8 megahertz, but someone didn't want the machine to compete with and outperform upcoming Macintoshes, so the 2GS was instead released at 2.8 megahertz. If you want to learn more about how the 2GS was shortchanged and never got the love it deserved, check out this video here where we built this tricked out and transparent 2GS. But now we're going to trick it out even more. Now, if you think that this thing is one impressive PCB, you're going to love the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay has long been a go-to source for PCB prototyping, offering high quality PCBs, PCB assembly services, and a lot more. Like, say you wanted to recreate this accelerator board. I mean, it's really just a PCB and a bunch of components, right? You could do it start to finish on PCBWay. Not only could they professionally print the board that you reverse engineer, but they could assemble most of it for you as well. Whatever components that they don't have in stock, you can send to them to be professionally soldered on. They're even running a really good promo on assembly services right now. So if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. The Zip GS was one of two accelerators for the 2GS released around 1988 the other being the more popular Transwarp GS. Both of them offered massively upgraded processor performance, starting out at that magical eight megahertz and going up to 10, 12, or even faster with overclocking. Now, there's a reason I say that this Zip GS is the rarest. You can actually still buy a brand new Transwarp GS today. There's a company called Reactive Micro who well, they make a ton of cool Apple II stuff, but they also make a brand new and massively improved Transwarp GS. In fact, I'd love to pit this Zip GS against a Transwarp GS if I can ever get my hands on one. Anyway, this Zip 2 GS was very generously donated to the channel by a viewer who asked to remain anonymous. And <laughs> this upgrade is seriously one of my absolute grail vintage computer things. I can't believe I have one and I'm so eternally grateful for this magical piece of technology. But that's enough waffling on. Let's get a little closer and take a look at this upgrade. Okay, so here is the Zip GS upgrade card and it's a, <laughs> a pretty interesting card. The way this works is that you remove your original processor from the Apple II GS and you slot this into one of the slots in your machine and replace your processor with this kind of dummy processor on a ribbon cable attached to the card. And there's actually a spot here to stow your original processor, even though it's not really connected to anything. There's a couple pins connected to, I guess, 
the ground or something. I don't, I don't really understand why, but none of the other pins on your processor, your original processor will go anywhere. That's purely just to store the chip. And this is the processor that takes over. This is a W65C816 SPL, which is the same thing pretty much as this. This is an 816, this is an 816, but this is a much faster, higher rated chip. Additionally, you have all of this cache, which is all socketed and upgradable, and your crystal oscillator up here, which makes it very easy to overclock this thing. In fact, my crystal oscillator here is socketed, <laughs> which means I can just pop this out and pop in new ones and experiment with different speeds on this card, which I fully intend to. There's also a bank of dip switches here, which control various options on the card. It's all in the manual what these do, but I'm just gonna leave them set here because I believe these are actually the default positions, which should work just fine. Okay, so first let's mess around with the stock processor in the 2GS and uh, we'll run some benchmarks. And by benchmarks, I mean, I'm gonna show you just how painful the Wolfenstein 3D experience is at 2.8 megahertz. Okay, and as is usual for Action Retro, no fancy screen capture because I couldn't get it working. So we're going with camera pointed directly at the screen. So I wanna show you a couple things here on the stock machine. If we go into about this Apple 2GS, we do have a maxed out eight megs of RAM on system 601 here. And when we drag a window around, we can see there's definitely some redraw lag here. And uh, if we open up some more windows, yeah, uh, it can get a little bit slow here. <laughs> Dragging this stuff around on this stock processor. But just look at how beautiful GSOS is. I mean, it really looks like the Macintosh OS just with color. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this machine really got a bad shake from Apple. Okay, so I wanna show two games here. Uh, we've got Wolfenstein 3D, which is my kind of holy grail game to play on the 2GS here. But let me pull up one more that I think will run a little bit better on the stock 2GS. And it's a game that probably a lot of people have never seen on a 2GS. That's right. <laughs> Somebody did a remake of Super Mario. It actually runs pretty well on here. Oh. <laughs> Can't quite figure out how to run. <laughs> oh. And then to get out of the game, I think you just have to hit escape and every time you hit escape, you die. <laughs> Until you get back to the title screen and then you can do Apple Q. So it's Kind of sluggish on here, but runs surprisingly well for 2.8 megahertz. <laughs> but now let's give the old Wolfenstein 3D a try on the stock Apple 2GS processor. Now this game was notoriously difficult to run on a non-upgraded 2GS. And uh, a lot of people said this game probably shouldn't have actually come out for the Apple 2GS but it's super cool that they made this port. I mean, Wolfenstein 3D is one of my favorite games of all time, and I've always wanted to play it on a 2GS. Now that loading screen certainly took a while. And here we are. <laughs> I mean, it works. Uh, but there is uh, <laughs> quite a speed issue. 
And the graphics are really impressive, honestly. A little bit pixelated, a little tough to see. The bad guys in the distance. But yeah, very cool that this game exists and it works. Slow as it may be, wow, especially spinning around. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that this is unplayable, but it is frustratingly slow. I don't think so, fella. No halting for me. So that's enough of this. I think you get the point. This game is pretty slow on the stock 2GS, kind of borderline unplayable. Although if I was a kid playing this game, I would totally play it on the 2GS and uh, I would still enjoy every second of it. But let's install that upgrade and see just how much of a difference it makes. All right, time to install the upgrade. We're gonna need some tools, including a way to pull the original processor, which thankfully is socketed, although I'm always super nervous about this because I'm pretty notorious for bending pins no matter how careful I am. I blame these huge hole cans. To make sure that we do everything right, we'll use the official manual and do this completely by the book. So step one is ground yourself. All right, so step two, we have to pry out this processor, which is right here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I hate doing this, but it's a socketed chip and I have this wedge shaped plastic thing, which uh, hopefully I can just kind of push in. Come on. All right, oh, gotcha. Oh, see, look at that. My terrible fat fingers, I always wind up like dropping it or flinging it somewhere. And now this card can only go in a few of these slots because it has to be able to reach with this little ribbon cable here. And it looks like this was set up originally to just go directly under the card here, which would line up with slot three. So that's what we're gonna do. Luckily that slot is open and just right next to our other net two card here. So we'll unplug my little ethernet extension and uh, <laughs> yeah, just slot this in. I don't know if I should connect the processor first or connect the slot first. I'm gonna take this out to make it easier on myself. There we go. Really don't want to bend any of these pins. All right, that's in. And we are in slot three. <laughs> All right, Stealth Apple 2GS accelerated. First boot, hopefully. <laughs> Here we go. It's alive! <laughs> All right, so here we are, booted into what should be eight megahertz, but we can check that in control panels because this install has the ZipGS control panel. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Eight megahertz, but only 16K of cash. Actually, I thought there was more than that, but that's okay, but... Cool, <laughs> eight megahertz. And yeah, I can already tell these windows are much more responsive. I mean, they're not, they're not amazing, but compared to what they were, they are <laughs> twice as fast in the window redraw. Very cool. But let's check out the most important thing and that is game performance. 
We'll do a little bit of Super Mario and see if that has any improvement since this is actually a modern game from 2017. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Way faster. Oops. I figured out how to run. <laughs> I never said I was good at this. This music is kind of terrible. Ah, no. This is a very faithful recreation of Super Mario. Oh no. <laughs> Yikes. The controls are a little weird feeling. Hey, there we go. Yeah, he doesn't have quite the same physics that you'd expect. But that's enough Super Mario. Let's get out of here. And let's give Wolf 3D Apple 2GS version a try. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> Well, that loaded in like half the time as before. Oh yeah, look at that. That is so much faster. Oh yeah. Now it's really playable. Halt. I don't think so, friend. Get out of here. I'm BJ Blaskowitz. <laughs> I will destroy you all. Give me your secret rooms. Yeah, he got me. Oh yeah. Wow, this is awesome. There's no music in the stage, I guess, but the sound effects are excellent. Like the sound of the secret door opening. Oops. It's still a little bit hard to see these pixelated bad guys in the distance. But yeah, I would play the crap out of this. And in fact, I think I will. Wow, this is awesome. That's not a secret. Get out of here. Don't give me your guff. Listen to how good that sound is. Like the creaking of the stone as it opens. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, this machine at eight megahertz is awesome. <laughs> okay, so that'll do it for this look at the absolutely incredible ZipGS Apple IIGS Accelerator. <laughs> I'm so blown away by this thing, and I'm so excited to have it in my possession. Thank you so much, Anonymous Benefactor, for sending this over for us to look at together. And I have a lot of plans for this accelerator, including trying to get it to go as fast as possible with at least a new oscillator and a new, well, newer version of that processor that's rated for a much higher speed. And I've been reading about changing other chips on that board to get it to go even faster. People have had this thing up to more than 20 megahertz. When it comes at stock 2.8 megahertz, 
20 megahertz, that's incredible. And I think we're well on the way to having the ultimate stealth 2GS build with this clear Mac effects case, an eight megabyte GG Labs RAM module, the accelerator, the solid state storage, the Othernet 2 Ethernet with the Ethernet port mounted on the back, and this wonderful, wonderful Mac effects keyboard. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Apple 2GS shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. A special thanks to Adrian, B. Perkins, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Rut K Mods, Nano, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these shenanigans possible.